the circle of fifths, the Camelot wheel, whatever you want to call it. It's more than just a DJ tool for harmonic mixing, and it can really elevate your DJ sets or your live performances to the next level. In this video, I'm going to teach you a couple key techniques for incorporating keys in your next set. <laughs> See what I did there? Harmonic mixing. And whether you think it's just some dark art, an unnecessary style of DJing, or just something that musicians do, hold on, hold on just a second. It's true, if you're a musician, one of the first things you're gonna focus on other than the tempo is gonna be the musical key. A performance without its consideration in a live musical set would lead to disaster. It would sound horrible. But luckily for you, you don't have to be Beethoven to make use of the circle of fifths. Now, before we get too far ahead, if you don't already know what the circle of fifths or the Camelot wheel is, totally go here because I have a great video that's gonna educate you on what it is and how exactly you can use it in your live sets. The 101. So let's get started. Here is a list of a couple of my favorite techniques that I always like to use in my live sets. In no way is this a comprehensive list, but I did save my favorite for last. Luckily, a lot of equipment these days and nearly all software is going to let you manipulate the key of your song nowadays. So, this is just what I'm gonna use as an example today. In no way do you need this piece of gear to accomplish these tasks, but it's just my preferred piece of gear right now. I'm really loving this guy. This is the Denon Prime 4. It's a standalone unit. The computer is built into this puppy. So, let's take a look at this screen really fast. I am running in just two deck mode right now, so we only have two songs loaded up. Um, on this song over here on the B side, number two deck, uh, it's gonna show me the key right here. And if I tap the key, it's gonna pull up a, a key adjustment window essentially. So let's go ahead and just play this track really quick. And I can tap up and down this scale to go by semitones on the circle of fifths or the Camelot wheel, and I can nudge it in uh, the musical key essentially of the song. That probably sounds pretty familiar because a lot of people, if you turn off your key lock, which you should have on your piece of equipment, and we play it at zero, that's the key that the song is intended to be played in. But if I pitch this up and down and I have the key lock off, then you get the same kind of pitching effect. The only difference here is when you use the key law or this uh, key adjustment window, it's actually gonna lock it to the tempo that you currently have the song in. So if I turn back on key lock, I have it 140 BPM right now. If I wanted, I can go up, let's say two, two semitones right here. And it's not changing the pitch of this or the, the tempo of the song, it's still in 140, but I've gone up a couple semitones where normally I'd have to move the pitch fader up here to get that same effect. So with that being said, my first technique is the buildup. All right, let's do this technique. This is a cool one. So uh, you might have heard this one before. It's pretty popular. Essentially, we're going to take two decks. Uh, we'll play in Psytrance music right now. I'll play in different genres just so you can see these are available and possible in all different genres. So right now we're starting in Psytrance. Let's get this song going. <laughs> All right, let's break it down now. So we have two decks loaded up, the one that the crowd is already listening to and the deck that we're gonna be introducing. So right at the buildup, I'm gonna start the new song. Make sure they're in the same tempo right here. And then I'm just gonna start pitching up one semitone at a time. And what you saw me do there right at the very end is essentially I tapped the key lock off and I tapped it back on and that essentially reset the, the key adjustment I made right back down to zero. So when the drop came, you didn't have a really pitched, um, awkward drop. Otherwise it could have sounded like this. And no one wants to dance to that. So this is what it sounds like all by itself.
And when you layer the two, it is fantastic results. You can do this with vocals, you can do this with loops, all sorts of stuff. It's very cool, very fun, uh, and super simple to do. Technique number two. The drop. All right, let's get into this one. I really like it because you get to be a little bit more creative than the last one uh, and come up with your own melodies, your own top lines, essentially. So I have two decks going on. This deck on deck A is gonna be playing out for its entirety, but on deck two, I just took a little sample, a little cut. So I know, bitch, be on. <laughs> this trick is done in trap music. Again, it's good for any genre. So I like the little I. I it's got a little snare behind him. It adds a little extra punch. It's cool. We can do something with that. Do a little top melody. So if we grab that and then we go down to that. So I'm just pitching three semitones in this instance. You can do a whole octave. You can do whatever you want. Check this out. There you go, that's the technique. Pretty dang simple. There's so many cool different rhythmic patterns that you can come on. A lot of times I'll even double what another song is playing, just the rhythmic pattern. So if it has a really, you know, the top line percussion or the top line melody has a really catchy rhythm to it, I'll just double that and I'll play it over here. The cool thing about this trick, unlike the last trick because it has to stay tempo locked, is you don't have to use. You don't have to use the key adjust up here. What you can do is just turn off your key lock and I'm just gonna adjust this up 100% so we get the most pitch variation over here. So this is almost completely stopped. It is stopped. Up to super, super fast. But what that means is while I'm drumming, I can use this hand to adjust the pitch. So let's start that again and do it with this. There you go. That is tip number two. Check it, check it, check it out. You guys go practice that one. On to tip number three. It's called scales. So in this technique, essentially, I'm gonna be playing scales. That's it. I mean, that is the trick. So I have a whole bunch of samples that I have made in my production software, and they cover everything from vocals to piano, uh, guitar, all sorts of things, synthesizers that I've made and I have put them on a scale. Essentially, there is eight semitones in a typical minor or major Western scale, and so this is a synth. Uh, essentially, it's a pluck, uh, a ping sound, so check this out. And that starts on A minor. All of my minor scales start on A minor, and then depending on the, the key of the song that I'm producing, or that I'm mixing into, I'm gonna change that. So. I can literally just hit A minor here, and uh, I'm mixing into a song that's in G minor. So I think that's two, yeah, negative two semitones. And so now my scale sounds like this. So I'm essentially gonna take that sound, add a little bit of flare on it. Just put a little bit of echo there. Um, something else I could do actually is throw a little bit of reverb on this guy. Just kind of beefing it up a little bit, make it sit in the mix. And then I'm gonna take a song over here. Let's fast forward in time. And I'm gonna create a new melody. You can double up a melody that is already happening with a new instrument, add a, a, some fresh flair to a song that people already know, or just create something out of the blue, which I'm gonna do right now.
I just improvised that on the spot, but essentially you can prehearse something very cool. You can practice a, uh, a series of melody notes that are in a song that you already like. But what's really cool about this technique um, is, for instance, I'm in G minor right now, but because I can go down an octave and I can go up an octave, I can go over here and I'm gonna go up 10 semitones. So essentially an octave above where we just were. So instead of playing that little bit bassier note, this will be like a top lead line. So. So now it sounds a lot higher. And you can get something like that. It's pretty cool. I really love this technique. I love the expressiveness and what it opens up. It also is something that really catches people's eyes. So when you have uh, the fans are watching and they're actually watching and listening to what you're doing, they're like, well, this is kind of cool. It's almost like playing an instrument. It really is like playing an instrument. Besides, you're here on your DJ decks. You don't have to leave your decks at all. So to do this technique, you do have one requirement. You have at least eight pads, eight hot cue pads. So you can assign the entire scale to those pads. If you have just four or three like the earlier CDJs, this won't work, unfortunately, um, at least effectively. But you also can do this with samples like harder, better, faster, stronger. You've probably seen that used a lot of times. So it's super fun. It's cool. Um, and I don't know. Do you guys tell me, are these cool techniques? How will you use them in your music? Will you use them in your music? Do you have a technique that I missed that you think is just bananas? Don't forget to look at my course below. I think you guys will love it. So much useful video information. Um, and I also have like PDF guides on there. So we'll help you along your whole DJing journey, get you out there, get you some gigs, uh, of course, after this whole COVID thing ends and just get you popping, locking and dropping. All right, guys. Hey, thank you so very much for checking out this video. If you think I deserved it, get down there, hit that like button, smash the subscribe button and the bell notification, all of that goodness. If you don't think I earned it, give me a big fat thumbs down. I need to know. I need to know why though, huh? Hey guys, get out there, practice, enjoy, have lots of fun. DJ, 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 yeah baby, let's go. Trap Tiger